This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In this video, we are going to get data into the tables that we created using Apex SQL Workshop to run some scripts. Before we do that, I have a graphic that I want to show that hopefully depicts how we can have multiple users, some in the Apex environment, some in the database itself, and how the Oracle XE, Apex, and SQL developer interact. So we're going to look at sequences and triggers. This coding was inserted into the database in the animal shelter schema when we created the tables. We'll take a quick look at those before we run the scripts that will insert the data into the tables. And there's an order in which the data should be inserted. And we'll take a look at our data model, our data dictionary, to see why that is. And then I have one file that is not a script that doesn't automatically insert data into a table because I want us to use the data workshop utility in SQL workshop and see how we can bring data in through a simple text file. So I thought it might be helpful to look graphically at what's happening with the software because I have talked about at the database level or in Apex. So at the database level, we have things called schemas or accounts. And the schema that we're working with primarily is Animal Shelter. That contains the tables of our database. Within Oracle XE, there could be another schema, many other schemas that also have databases. But we'll be working with Animal Shelter. But there are other databases that could exist in the Oracle XE database software environment. You can also have accounts, schemas, that are simply to provide users access to the database. At the same time, in Apex, remember that we have workspaces. Each workspace contains the design elements for one or more web applications. Within each workspace, you can have users for that specific workspace, such as Ann Davis, in Workspace A, and the same Ann Davis has an account to work in Workspace B. These users don't cross over, and this is for the development environment in Workspace A. Ann Davis has to have a separate account if she's going to work directly in the database environment. This is why with Workspaces in Apex, we can have accounts with the same name as long as they're in separate workspaces. And when we're in SQL Developer, which we'll use a little bit in this particular video, in SQL Developer, we have direct access to the database environment and we use SQL Developer to write SQL code and execute it. There are many other tools that it provides. Primarily, we're gonna use it if we want to run SQL which we can run in Apex, we've done that, but we can also run it in SQL Developer. So two tools that interact with the Oracle software environment. I'm logged in as Mark Adams in Apex, and I've got the two developer accounts, and I'll, I'll go back and forth between those to help illustrate that you can have multiple users working in this workspace environment in Apex. And Apex will keep track of who does what, who made a change at what time, at what date. We're going to go to SQL Workshop and go to Object Browser. And I just want to point out that we can go to the sequences that were created when we ran scripts earlier, such as things like Animal ID. This sequence is going to give us a unique number for each one of the animals that we have in our animal shelter. You can go to the SQL tab and see the actual SQL code. It was also viewable within the script that we ran. We also have triggers. 
So for animals, BI is before insert. That's just a naming convention. They don't have to be called that. But with this trigger, if we go to the code, and we can see it also just under the SQL tab, this is programming code that I will explain in more detail in an SQL video related to this particular Apex video. Briefly, what the trigger does is when you insert a row in a table, the trigger will go get a unique number from the sequence, put it in the primary key field of the that record in the table. So now let's switch over in SQL Workshop and go to SQL Scripts. In SQL scripts, I'm going to upload. And let me mention, by the way, we've run scripts before, but when I ran it, I was logged in as Mina Mendez. So I don't see the script that was run that created the tables. But now I'm going to upload some files. I'm going to upload animals, employees, persons, transactions, zip. I will do one and then pause the video while I bring in the other scripts. So insert data, animals. I'll pause the video while I get the rest of them inserted. Before I run these scripts, I'm going to take a look at our data dictionary, our data model, and SQL developer. The basic rule for inserting data is when you look at the diagram in a one-to-many relationship, you need to insert the data on the one side before you do the many side. There are ways to get around this, but we're not even going to go there follow the rules. What we need to do is, for example, zip code has a one-to-many relationship to persons. I will add the zip data first, then I will add the persons data. If you notice, I'm looking at these relationships, persons only ha is on the many side in only one relationship. So I've made a list here of the order in which I'm going to insert the order in which I'm going to insert data by running the scripts. I'm going to do zips, persons, employees, animals, transactions, activities. I'll do zips and then I will pause the video while I execute the other scripts. So the first one I want to run happens to be the first one listed, but that's just a coincidence. I'm now going to click run and I'll run now. I want to scroll down and I want to see that the statement's processed. You don't know the exact number, but you want to make sure that you have zero errors. Zero errors. I'll do one more because the next one would be persons and I'll run it. Zero errors. Just for fun, I'm going to try running that one again. lots of errors. You can't insert the data again once it's been inserted. If you look, you'll see unique constraint violations. These are the problems for the errors, and there are many of them because I have many records to insert. So one of the great things about the database environment is it's got the little rule book, and the primary key has to be unique, and my scripts give unique values as the data is inserted. So if you run a script accidentally a second time, it's going to look like it failed, but it failed simply because you had already added that data. I guess the one other thing before I pause the video and run the rest of the scripts is I'm going to go over to Object Browser. I'm going to go to Persons, and I'm going to click the Data tab, and I now have data. I can go to SQL Developer and come over here to Animal Shelter, go to Tables, go to Persons, go to the Data tab, and I have the data. This is just one tool looking at the database just like Apex is. I'll pause the video while I run the other scripts, but I'll remind you here with my notepad before I pause. I've done Zips and Persons. I'll now do Employees, Animals, Transactions, Activities. After I ran the transaction script to insert data into transactions, I had two errors, and I had forgotten that I actually put this in here to indicate 
what would happen if you tried to add a transaction for which there was no animal ID. So in this error, what we have is the attempt to add a transaction with an invalid or non-existent animal ID. So that is one with errors that I planned. And I had said that I was going to run the activities, but that's coming up now because what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm going to go to a workshop and I'm going to go to utilities because I have that set up to come in as a text file. So if I open this up, and I'm going to open it up, if I double click on it, I'm going to open it in Excel. I want to open it in Notepad. And so what I have is these records that need to come in and I'm going to bring them in using the data workshop. So I'm going to click on data workshop and I want text data. That's what I'm bringing in and it's going to go into an existing table and I will upload the file. I'll click next and which table it's going to go into activities. I'll click next. I'll choose the file. It's the CSV file and I'll it's asking what's a separator, it's a comma, and I think that's all we need to do. I'll go ahead, oh, and it asks whether or not the first row is, whether or not the first row has column names, and it does not. So click Next. If it had column names, obviously we could use that to match up with the actual column names in the table. So because we didn't have column names, we will need to come in and identify each column for the column in the table. And the first one is the ACT ID, activity ID. I'm assigning the actual primary key value in these scripts so that I can make sure that we all get the same numbers when we run the scripts. And we're looking at, if I illustrate something and you're trying to follow that, I know that you're going to have the same values. The next number is the animal ID. Then we have the activity date. We have the category of the activity. We have the subcategory, medical exam, for example, medical vaccination. Then we have a description. And then we have the person who is an employee that processed this record. So we're going to load the data, and then we can come up to SQL Workshop, Object Browser, go to Activities, click the Data tab, and we see that the data has come in. A pretty nice tool. There is an SQL video that goes along with this where I talk more about the sequence code and the trigger code. We're about to begin creating our application in the next several videos. Remember the naming conventions for related videos in this tutorial series. The Apex videos are 00, zero through 12, 14, whatever, however many videos there are. If there's a related database video for a specific video, let's say I've at Apex 02, then that name is going to be, for the database, is going to be Apex02DB and then the number of that video series. Because for this one Apex video, I might end up having two or even three videos about the database concepts. There'll be some Apex videos that have none of these, but this is how you can access the database videos specific to that Apex video. And the same thing would go if I have Apex, let's say, 03. I have something specific I want to cover in SQL. That would be SQL and 01 through SQL 03. So I would have 1, 2, 3. All of these relating to the Apex video 03. Hopefully that'll help.